And okay. Let's click on that one. Got it. Okay. I'll start again. 6.30, we'll be uh, calling this meeting to order. And we'll start with the uh, approval of the minutes. We have Peter Kalabotis and Frank Souza were there. Uh, Peter is no longer on the committee. Uh, so it's Sean, George, and Frank. I'll attain a motion to uh, approve the minutes. So moved. I'll second them. Uh, Joshua, would you be doing the uh, roll call on all of this tonight? Yeah, I can assist with that. Okay. Uh, so it'll only be Sean, George, and myself on this first one, minutes. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, let's have a roll call vote. Mr. Sousa? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. Second, we have the July 20, 2021 meeting. Uh, president, that meeting was, I entertain a motion to accept this minutes as presented. Uh, second. Eric, Eric, you made the motion. I'll second it. Okay, any, any questions about the minutes? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote on that. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? Abstain. No, yeah, abstain. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you, the motion was approved. Okay. Um, first thing on our agenda is uh, Ordinance D, FY22-001. Uh, prohibited sale of 100 milligram less alcohol beverage containers. At our last meeting, uh, a motion was made to um, change that and to, um, I just had it in my hand. And that motion changed it to 50 and it changed the date from 30 to 180 days. Um, and it was a only two people present, one approved it and one against it. So it's come back today when we have a full committee and we can open it to discussion as a beginning and then vote on it again as with the amendment because the amendment was already approved. Um, what I'm gonna say is the whole idea behind this ordinance was to get the state to move on adding these bottles to the bottle bill. There's been legislation before them for four years. Several towns have already passed it. We and have already stopped the sales. We're not interested in stopping the sales, but we're trying to tell the people at the state house it's time to drag them out from wherever you got them hidden and act on them. I think I'm and, losing uh, signal. That's why. It's, Please. I'm oh, sorry, Frank. I, I think I lost your signal. I wasn't sure if I was the only one. Your internet connection is unstable. Hmm. <laughs> so I missed the apologies, but I missed the second half of that. That's okay. Let's see if we have any luck now. Any better? Yep. Okay. No. Oh. Yeah. Again, we were just trying to get the three separate ones. Okay, so um, any other comments on these? Dennis, you're so, the other guy who goes out and picks up bottles and finds a lot of trash and them in there. So, so I, I know we have Council Gallagher on and there was some discussion about the local business owners doing something on their own. Has there been any movement on that, Dennis? If I could, Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, if I could just kind of tell everybody, you know, what I've agreed in principle with the, I met with the liquor stores over the summer when this was first proposed. And, and you know, Frank and I are sponsor and co-sponsor of this. When I met with them, um, 
they agreed in principle. This wouldn't be something the council would vote on. This wouldn't be something that we could put an ordinance or an order in. This is something that they agreed in principle to do, provided, provided that there'd be a delay in the council voting this up or down. And here's what they agreed in principle, is they agreed that they would institute their own little redemption program, meaning they would allow empty nips to come into their store. They would dispose of them on their own. At the same time, for example, if Eric brought in, it had to be a minimum, say 20, five empty nip bottles, if, if Eric Moore brought them in, Eric would bring, bring them in to a package store. Um, they would dispose of them for him. And that in turn, Frank, uh, Eric would put his name in a box, fill out a card, put his name, his cell phone number, put it in a little box. At the end of every month, the package stores would draw somebody's name and they would win a gift certificate somewhere. It would be an incentive for people in Bridgewater to go around and pick up nips, not throw them out their car. People might, well, people will probably still throw them out their car. There'll be some incentive for residents to pick them up and bring them into the store. They would dispose of them themselves. Now, it would be one a month, but all the liquor stores wouldn't do this. It would be one drawing a month where a one liquor, one package store would be responsible for that monthly gift card, if you will, say $50 gift card to something. Does, he, does It could be a gift card to their store. It could be a gift card to a local restaurant. It could be a gift card to a local uh, uh, um, uh, Home Depot or, or uh, Roche Brothers or something. Um, they've agreed to do that in principle. Now, it's been a few months. I haven't heard that they've reneged on it. I think they've been waiting to see when this resurfaces at the council level which is when I would bring this up. And what I would propose, you, you as the Rules and Procedures Committee have to do your work, obviously, and do what you think is right. Um, but what I will propose when this comes back to the council is that we table this for a period of time to allow liquor store owners to come through with what they said they in agreed to in principle. If they do that, and if it seems to be working, then there's really no need to do this, to impose this on them. If it doesn't work and it gets worse, then maybe this can be brought back to the council. At the same time, Frank, you're right, that legislation up on Beacon Hill has been sitting around for years. I keep hearing rumors that there's movement on it, then I hear there's, there's no movement on it. But this would give us, say, a year or so to see if there is any movement on it before we needed to take any action against it. So that's what they've agreed to do. Um, now, to their, their concerns, but I were, yeah, you can't, you don't know where these nips came from. They could come from, you know, Worcester. Who knows? You know, you, you hope not. But I'm just saying that you, they can't tag these nips to say they came from their store. They would have to accept them no matter where, no matter, you know, they can't question where they came from. They would have to accept them. And they, it, it wouldn't be open to just Bridgewater residents. Obviously, a couple of our package stores are on town, on town borders. So, and you know, if they recognize that they have a regular customer that doesn't live here, they would have to accept them as well. But the point would be, is that they're willing to take the trash off the road, the nips anyway, take them in, dispose of them themselves, and offer those people um, some sort of incentive to bring them in by putting their name in a monthly drawing. So that's what I've agreed with them agreed with them to do. They would pay for the gift card. One package store owner a month would put in the gift card, $50. I might even pay for the first one myself just to get it off the ground. Um, but they would put a box in their store. People come in with the nips. They put their name in the card. They don't have to do it. They can just bring them in and say, forget it. But they can choose the minimum. We obviously don't want someone to stand in the parking lot, you know, whoosh down their nip and bring it in and put their name in. You know, hopefully they have a minimum number of uh, nips, but that's up to the business owner. We're not imposing this on them. They've agreed in principle to do that. To hold them accountable would be to say, okay, well, we'll table this for, I don't know, six months, a year. 
instead of voting it up or down. I don't even know how the vote would go on the council. I'm not sure. But if it were voted down, if it were voted down without tabling it, then there would be no incentive for them to do anything. And obviously, if it were if it were voted to to ban them, I think that they've addressed some very major concerns regarding their operations if if the NIPs were banned. Um, so that's my that's what I've agreed with them in principle to do. And I would ask that if this comes back to the council, that I would request to the council that it be tabled for a period of time to allow this program to take effect. Dennis, just from a quick procedural standpoint, you probably want to continue it to a date certain. Something like uh, that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as opposed to tabling it just because sure. I think your intent right. is to have it kind of linger out there for a little bit. Right, see if this works, right. All right, now let's uh, uh, look at the amendment. Go ahead, George. Sean, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I, I would make a motion to approve as amended. Okay, um, and I'll second that. Is there discussion? Now we can discuss it after it's approved. After it's been, after we've made the motion and seconded it, now it's open for discussion. So go ahead. Um, so I, I think there's a couple of things. I brought it up in the last time and and I want to maybe resurface them here. So I, I think there's a few things in this. I think one is as written, the whereas clause presents this as fact, right? So like NIP is, NIPs are um, growing in, as a problem, you know, they're prevalent. Um, and I presented in the discussion last time that if you look at actually some national statistics here, that's not necessarily the case. Actually, the thing that's growing are packaged food wrapping. So uh, chip bags, you know, candy wrappers, that sort of thing. Um, and I actually, based on our discussion last time and a, another discussion on the quality of sidewalks, I went downtown and I, I started at the, the college track and I walked all of downtown and I was taking pictures of the trash I saw and just trying to get a sense of, you know, is this, is our nips everywhere in town? Um, and they're not. And, and so what, what I did see a lot of were energy drinks. I saw a lot of like plastic trash parts. I saw a ton of snack wrappers and I did see nips, but, but nips were not, you know, kind of like the leading litter item. And that's also supported by that, um, you know, kind of that national research. And that's not implying that there, you know, aren't focused areas in town. I think you guys mentioned a canoe ramp at one point where they're there, but but it's a small piece of a very big problem. And if you walk the town, it's not the biggest problem. And so my, my concern with this is, you know, if we take whereas to mean, you know, this is a fact and we're asking the council to, to make a decision based on the fact, I don't know that we've proven that, right? I don't, we didn't do, you know, like what Mashpee did where they, they had someone go out and actually do a study, right? We, we haven't seen any information other than our opinions, which matter, um, but I think facts probably matter a little bit more. Um, the, the other thing I would say here is I think the precedent of us dangling legislation in front of a group to get them to take individual action is tricky, um, especially if, if that's a precedent that we're setting. Um, and so if the plan here actually isn't to pass the law, it's actually to kind of force business owners to take an action um, you know, I, I would suggest there might be other ways we could try to, to do that. Um, so, you know, I, I think it maybe maybe just the last point on this one. You know, I, I, I think if I, I fully support wanting to tackle litter, and I know that this comes from a really good place, um, but I'm really concerned if we look at what, what actually happened with the plastic bag legislation, the state level saw cities acting on it and decided they no longer had to. So there at 60% of, of towns have banned plastic bags. I think it's something like that. I might have to stand wrong. Um, and then the state stopped acting on it, right? And then the state said, well, look, you know, the town's made their own decisions. So if you're actually trying to drive the larger change, us making a change at the local level de-incentivizes the state level. Um, and that's a, that's a concern I have here. And then, and then maybe just the last thing, I think this is a big enough issue 
where I would also, you know, I, I, our community is mixed on it. I've gotten emails on both sides. I'm sure you guys have too. If we are looking to actually make a change here, you know, my preference would be to somehow put it in front of the voters. Um, so, you know, I, I, I just want to share that. And then I think, you know, ask for consideration as we think about options here. I'd like to add a couple of comments as, as well. So understanding that, you know, Eric, I think we've had other orders where we've had some language in there that which were, is broad enough that didn't have specifics in regards to actual proof data, things of that nature. Um, I also could not disagree more with the fact that if you uh, walk the areas that I walk in my neighborhood, 106, uh, uh, Mill Street, High Street, um, we go through and we pick up an exorbitant amount of, of nip bottles, not only to do that, but then to come back maybe three to, we'll say a month later. And in the particular spots, there's as many, if not more. I'm not looking at this as forcing individual, um, individual companies in the town to force their hand to do something. This is us enacting something that is a step towards making uh, our community a little bit better. You bring up other things as well. I, I would love you know, to talk on a, on a different avenue about litter. Uh, I know that's a problem as well, but uh, we've talked about this for years, if not decades. Um, and I would be of the mindset that I, I'm not dangling in, in front of the business owners. I would be fully supportive in enacting this um, because I really see that if short of some sort of deposit or something that the business owners are going to implement on their own under their terms, which is fine, as long as they do it, I'm fine with that. But I think um, we, have, we have been charged on addressing this for a long period of time. We finally gotten to the point where we've got something that can address it and I would fully support it. Understood. Maybe if I could make a comment, and I, I appreciate that. I, I also do clean up on Vernon Street. So I walk the street and I pick up the trash along it. I also have seen nips there and I've seen them on each run. So I know that they're part of it. Um, you know, I think if, if you look at the data on this, and I, I realize that we all have personal experiences, so it may or may not apply, but you, our brains see every nip bottle as the same type of litter. So if you see five nip bottles, the, the grand total is five. If you see a snack wrapper and then a Snickers wrapper and something else, you don't categorize them the same. So you don't have a running tally of all of the other types of litter that you see. And so it does actually make nips stand out above. And this was kind of validated in that Make America Beautiful study that they did. Um, and so again, I'm not implying that there isn't a littering problem um, I think there is. Uh, it's less than 1% nationally of litter is nips from that same study. Um, I, I think if we push this, we lose the opportunity to partner with those businesses in other ways. Um, some of the other things that are proven, right? The adopt a highway sort of thing, the signage stuff, you, you lose the partnership if we pull the trigger. So, you know, I'm not saying we, we shouldn't put it back in front of the, the council. I think obviously everyone should weigh in and we should make a decision. I do think we should do a little more homework to just make sure we're putting the full set of information in front of them that goes, that goes along with us. Um, you know, whether that's certain roads in town, whether that's a landing that we want to, we want to give, I think to just generally say NIPs are a problem. Um, and I, I'm not sure that that's something we want. It's kind of just kind of sit on the books because it's not, it's not proven. Um, that's my perspective. Finished. Okay. <clears throat> A couple of little comments here. Um, you compare this to the plastic bag. Okay. The plastic bag, each city and town can make that decision themselves. But a city and town, to the best of my knowledge, and I got this from some people, cannot put a deposit on a nip bottle. I think I lost you, Frank. That, 
That's my understanding as well. That can only happen at the state level. I was told that they had their association was talking with the state to get that NIP deposit down. And the reason is several cities and towns in the state have already completely banned them. And we don't want that here. We just want the state to put that in there as a deposit. Okay. Um, so that's now the other thing, as far as the trash goes, um, I believe it's Maine passed an, a, an ordinance that, or a, a, a law that all the fast food businesses, they're going to pay a stipend to the state each year. And that money would only be used to pick up the trash. Why is that relevant? Because I was informed that our own state representative, Angelo D'Amelio, and 26 others at that time already have a bill before in the House, okay, to do a similar program as that. And we feel that they're working on both of those things together because to work on pick up the trash and not to deposit on the bottles makes no sense. So we're looking at to see when they're coming out. And there was some word up there saying that the NIP one was coming out. Of it was actually going to be starting that 180 days from the day that the council approves it. Now, it's already been a couple of months since all this started, and another six, that's like eight months, the state knew that we were going to do something, and eight months, the state should be able to take and finish up what they're doing, okay? So that's my position. Anything else from anyone else? Yeah, I can briefly weigh in for you guys on the, the notion of deposits and taxation. So the state has the authority uh, and the state alone has the authority in particular in this context, because there's no statute that gives local control over any sort of taxation or ability to charge um, for those bottles. So uh, it, that is only that that authority lies only within the power of the state. So we we actually have no ability or no authority um, to do anything in, in that vein. So just, you know, in case anyone was contemplating, maybe we could come up with something like that. Um, in this context, we don't have an ability to, to tax or charge um, any sort of municipal uh, fee associated with those. All right. Maybe if I could just make one more comment on the wording of it, separate, separate from my opinion on whether or not this is the biggest form and wondering why we're going after this and not the biggest form, which is again, snack wraps. The last sentence in this, I, I do have some concern that if the state does take action and decides um, to potentially put a different deposit on it or has some other name for the bill, um, you know, I, I do feel like we're trying to tie the exit of this to a state action and our language there is very specific. I just want to make sure we wouldn't accidentally prevent ourselves from being able to exit with the language that we have. Yeah, I, I, I actually had reviewed that. I, I tend to agree with you. I, I don't think you really can tie the end of the ordinance to a date like that. It's, it's too uncertain and it, and it remains a bit unclear um, about when it would actually remove our ordinance from the books. And, and there is no process by which our ordinances can be removed other than by vote of the town council. So um, I, I do agree. I, I don't think that should be in there. I think you either vote it or you don't vote it. And if you vote it and you want to get rid of it, then you bring it back and you get rid of it. Um, I think that's, that's the proper way under our charter um, to have and get rid of ordinances. Um, so I, I, I tend to agree. I, I don't think um, it, the only context that something like that can work is when you have a date certain by which something stops and you can be explicit in that way. But here it's not it's not like that. So I, I tend to agree. I think you 
you bring it forward, you vote it or you don't vote it. And then if you vote it and you want to get rid of it, you just bring it forward again and get rid of it. So should, if it's within, um, it's been a long day, so I don't have the words to, tonight. Um, to make a to make a motion to amend to strike out um, the words after passage all the way through, so end it, take effect, and I believe we amended it 180 days after passage period, and get rid of the rest of the language. Yeah, I, I think I think that's fine. I think that um, obviously the the 180 days after passage is also outside of what. Um, the charter says for ordinances, it says 30 days after passage. Um, so I think maybe a better approach if you want there to be a delay is to continue it at the council level as Dennis had kind of recommended um, for some amount of time before you, you actually vote on it. Because what you're actually doing is, is you're asking that the passage of this ordinance be something that's actually contrary to the timing which is set forth in our charter right relative to when things become actual ordinances it's 30 days um i i don't think it's completely um out of line but i i just think it's it's contrary to what our charter says so um i guess i would want to know kind of what the context of waiting the 180 days to have it passed is if it's just simply to see if there's action taken by private businesses maybe you just continue it as Dennis had suggested earlier at the council level. But, um, uh, you know, I, I think you probably could do it. I just, I think it's a little irregular. Maybe if I could make a comment, I think I suggested that change. Um, when I saw what some of the other towns who had made this change, they highlighted the need for those business owners to sell off their inventory. Um, so they wouldn't be stuck with essentially inventory that they, they couldn't sell. Ah, and, okay. And this, this is up to 30% of their revenue. Oh, okay. I see. In, in my mind, it wasn't that particular thing until Eric brought it up. My mind was we give the state six more months, which now it'll be a total of eight months to take action on something that's been sitting there for four years that they've now said they're bringing it out of committee. Okay, but we know the state can bring it out of committee, let it sit there for another four years. We really need this. And hopefully because of this other thing that they're bringing up with the trash, they will make some move on it this year. And that's in 180 days from now, you know, they shouldn't have a problem settling it, getting it done. I mean, they've only been working on it for over four years or they had it for over four years, put it that way. Okay, any other comments? Okay, hearing none, then the motion has been made to approve it. Um, oh, no, so I, I made a motion to amend. So okay. we have to vote on, on the motion to amend Which, to what strike. Was, okay. What was your amendment? Strike. To strike out all words after ordinance, and then have the, have have it end right there. So 180 days after passage of the ordinance period. Did we get a second on that? Uh, I'll second that. Okay. And we had any more any additional comments? Hearing none, uh, Joshua, can we get a roll call on the amendment, please? Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you, the motion was approved. Okay, so the motion has been approved. So now we'll go back to the uh, main ordinance and uh, have any, any further discussion on that. Can I ask just a procedural question? Um, if if we wanted to recommend this to go to the voters, would that happen when it goes back to the council for discussion? Or does that, yes. would this, okay. Yeah, so any, any of those amendments can happen at that level, absolutely. Great. Thanks. 
uh, no additional discussion on this. Okay. Um, Sean, anything further? Nope. Okay. Uh, Joshua, could you have a roll call, please? Mr. Souza? Yes. Uh, sorry, what are we roll calling on this? This is the, with the amend, the amendment has already been passed. All right, the two amendments, okay? So now we're on the original with the two amendments. And that's what this vote is for. And we're voting to send it back to council or we're voting for the... We're voting as a committee, whether the committee is going to approve it. And that's how it's going back. It's gonna go back to the council either way. Right. Okay. Um, so the vote is gonna determine whether the committee majority... Recommend, not, a, not approves it, but recommend. No, recommend, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. recommend. Yep. Recommending it to the council. Thank well, I, I, I would also say just in terms of sending it back to the council. So I know there was some discussion last time on this matter, uh, maybe just about how that process looks. So th there can be a vote whether or not it gets sent back to the council. Obviously, the council can always bring back anything at a committee, but a committee can decide on its own accord whether or not to let it go to council. Um, so that can be a motion that's made. I, I, I know Mr. Moore is act, uh, probably asking just for procedural clarification. So you can actually bring a motion like that. The council can also bring a motion on its own initiative and say, hey, I want to bring this back um, by vote. So just so you know that, Mr. Moore, I think that was the genesis of your question. It was. Yeah, thank you. Um... Okay, no further comment. Then let's have a roll call on that, please. Um, okay. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? House. Mr. Moore? Uh, no. Thank you. The motion was approved. Two in favor, one against. Just making a little note here. Okay. That one's done for this evening. Uh, let's see, next one on our list is, okay, ordinance D, FY22-002, Bridgewater Town Charter Amendment for correction of typographical and punctuation errors. Okay, do we have a, 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 a motion? Entertain a motion for this? I would mo motion to recommend. We have a um, second? Second. Okay, we a, can we get a roll call on that motion to? Is, to is there any, any discussion? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, hold on, yeah. back up. You're right, I'm, I'm just making a note over here. Uh, okay, let's open it up for discussion. Yes, uh, Eric. Uh, just a procedural question. Later on on the agenda, we'll talk about whether or not the word city it replaces the word town. And in many of these things that we're recommending, the original language of town still exists. And I was just wondering, do we does that get corrected if they all go back together at a later point? Or would we need to suggest that change now to these that are going to go back to the council? So I, I can answer that question actually. So um, Mr. Gallagher and Mr. George bro both had um, been kind enough to kind of group these things uh, as packages to make it a little more easier uh, on you all to, to figure out, you know, what you want to go forward and what you don't. Um, but having it come to committee was to start to figure out how to make these things a little more specific, number one, and to meld well together. So uh, first thing, um, with the first uh, thing that Mr. Sousa has um, read, uh, that particular ordinance, I think, might need some additional parsing out. So if you see it talks about corrections, typographical errors, but if you look at, so the, there was a couple of things that we noticed when we did um, a review from the, the town level. So I sat with the assistant town manager, the town manager, uh, Mr. McGraw, 
and we reviewed this stuff to just kind of put it in a form. We didn't want to change any of the context because that's up to you all, but we needed to get it in the proper ordinance uh, form. So in doing that, I think a few things to think about. So for this first one, you want to really be thinking about what specific typographical errors you want changed because actually the, the Charter Review Committee references the, uh, the version or the draft that we had sent to the legislature already, not something before that that got changed. So it gets a little convoluted uh, what actually happened there. Some of their recommendations are actually based off of something that didn't pass by the voters. So th there's, there's some real confusion there, number one. Um, so, so number two, in terms of these words, while typographical errors, I, I totally get, I, I t completely understand the context here. You really do want to go through each one of them because some of them, while semantics, actually have substantive uh, changes that they're making to the charter. So I, I, I think it's really important to have this ordinance. It's okay to have this ordinance read this way, but you want an addendum attached to it that is very specific about what typographical changes you all are recommending. Um, because I'm going to guess there's going to be debate on some of them. Um, but also in addition to that, we need to be that clear when we send it up to the legislature. Um, so I, I think this needs a little more um, kind of work through um, before it gets to the council and, and we, you know, we have all this out. Um, and I think the work through is really going back through and making a recommendation on the actual typographical corrections that you either see in the 2000, I believe it was a 2018 draft that went to the legislature uh, or from the original charter. Because believe it or not, they're actually, the, there's reference by the charter review committee to the proposed charter changes, but not the, the regular charter, the, the actual charter as exists now. So um, I think that's really important for you all to kind of uh, go through and find some specifics um, and then after doing that, I'm happy to review all that and make sure it reads in a way we all feel comfortable, but I would recommend that. And I'd recommend that for a lot of these changes because they're, they're, they're bigger than they appear, right? They're, they're not, they're not small changes and they're going to require some specificity at the state level. So when we talk about typographical changes, we need to kind of know in an addendum or an attachment, what are, what typographical changes specifically right? What edits and the way it's been grouped is perfect. Now it's a matter of what is included in that group. And so that's, that's what I would say relative to the first one. So my advice on that would be to probably keep it at the committee level, work through it, attach an addendum at once you have the addendum, make a motion to amend the ordinance to include the addendum that has the typographical corrections you want to see, and then send that to the council to work through. Um, because otherwise the council is not really working through anything. Um, so that that's what I think. I think those kind of things probably have to start happening, you know, at, at this level on the charter changes, because they're going to be pretty big um, issues, I suspect. And would I make a motion then to keep that at the committee level to follow that advice? Is, would that be the procedural? Uh, I mean, I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, you can certainly ask that first and foremost. I think you, you by doing that, you just got to make sure you keep it on your agenda to keep the thing moving. But I think the next logical step then, if you're going to keep it in, in, you know, make a motion to, to have this on the agenda for the next scheduled meeting, is to just make sure that there's an addendum uh, attached to this ordinance that has those specific typographical changes and stuff. Um, because there are, unfortunately, there are a few things floating around there uh, out in the, the cyber world. And, and you know I think you guys need to take a look at both of them, just see which are the, the edits you want and which you don't. That's all. Let me ask a question. Uh, sure. Sean. Um, did you and Dennis identify any of these particular typographical errors and punctuations that uh, 
need to be changed or was it just a general statement? No, we were, we were following the recommendations of the Charter Review Committee and, and to, you know, to the, to the point made, we probably have to get a little bit more specific on exactly what those changes are. So um, Attorney Rollins, you know, has a good point. So I would, I would support a motion to move this to our, our next scheduled meeting. So we have time to accomplish that. And I would say that the way you guys did it was totally appropriate and acceptable. It was just to get it into committee right. so we can start fine tuning it for the yeah. council. Right. So right. I, I totally get it. I mean, I, I'm not saying there was anything wrong with how you did it. I just think now that it's at committee, this is what committees are, are meant to do. Just kind of fine tune it for the council. That's all. Yeah, no, understood. I, but Dennis should have done a better job. I totally blame is, Dennis. Wait, is he still on? Yeah, I'm I thought he already dropped. Either one of you guys. <laughs> Frank, can I can I just add two yes. cents? Dennis, Frank, go there, ahead. There is a red line. There is a complete red line copy of the recommendations of the charter review that they brought forward. So all you got to do is. I think it's I think it's on the town website, or it certainly is available. But there is a red line copy of the changes that they recommend by detail. I didn't take the detail, and well, I I didn't right. attach the detail. I, All you got to do is get that red line copy, and then have another meeting and go through these. So you see, right? You see the typographical and punctuation errors. So they are out there. Well, well, we, what we may want to do if the, if this is in order, even. Before that, Dennis, is to have a review of even the red line and the things that Jason just brought up that aren't relevant or aren't accurate, don't even have them on the proposed amendment to keep it, keep it accurate. We could do that, too. The, the other issue you're going to find, and I don't think you guys knew this, and I didn't know it until I really dug in after you guys sent over the draft of all this, but... The, the red lines are red lines of the proposed amendments that got shot down by the voters. So they're not even red lines of the charter. So you're seeing red lines of red lines in some circumstances, which means they're redlining something that doesn't exist in our charter, which gets very complicated. So I would go back to the original <laughs> um, version of the charter and look at what the red lines are. I mean, there are provisions that they're editing in the charter review committee that don't exist in our charter, which is a problem within itself. Um, so so th that's what I wanna also caution you of. You don't wanna propose a red line of a red line that you know doesn't exist in our charter, obviously. So just food for thought, just to make your life a little easier and you're not wondering where did that provision come from? Um, it looks like some of that happened uh, unintentionally. So the bad news is the one we thought would be the easiest to get done is probably gonna be the hardest so exactly I, I i i would i would like i said i proposed um well actually eric you made you made the motion so if you want to amend it you can you made the original uh, motion yeah could i um amend my mo do i make a motion to amend my motion is that well, just, well it, no second. you can it has to be seconded so you can re yeah you can rephrase it okay great so i'd like to make a motion to add this to our next agenda second Okay. Any any other com any comments about that? Hearing none. Uh, Joshua, you take a vote on that. Roll call vote. Mr. Souza. Yes. Mr. George. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. So now it's coming back to the committee. Well, staying with the committee. Between now and the next meeting, we will have another meeting uh, and go over it. Um, so that's going to put that one done. Am I right? For this evening. And next on our list, let me just make a little note on that. Okay. D, D FY 22-003, Bridgewater Town Council, Article five, Article 4, Town Manager Temporary Absence. 
So for each, for each of these, I'm going to probably tell you to, to do something similar so you can go back through and really see um, how each of these affect the charter. But um, I, what this one in particular, one thing you guys want to think about is you may need to change other provisions of the charter um, based on if you decide to do this, because the town council is not supposed to be involved even in the absence of the town manager being there, uh, employing people for the town or appointing people or any of that. So we may have to amend some other sections if it's the intention of the town council to have the town council selecting someone in the absence of the town manager. Um, just, just some food for thought. Uh, you know, obviously you guys can figure out the rest of the logistics of that, but um, the way the charter reads that the town council is not to be appointing people or engaging in employment uh, of employees. So I think that that would just be something you probably would want to amend along with it if you're going to do this. Um, so, Jason, e even yeah. if we don't even if we don't have a town manager or an yep. assistant town manager. Yep. Yep. OK, so so. It, the the way that the charter reads is basically it ge it gives the town manager the ability to kind of figure that out on his own right he has he has some guidance with the um you know a department mm -hmm. head but the reason it was written that way initially is if you read the charter it basically says the council shouldn't get involved in employment other than with the town council clerk and the town manager and so this this is kind of getting involved in employment obviously you guys are selecting who's going to run the town in the interim and I'm not, I'm not cast. I, I don't have any editorial comments on that. It, it's up to you guys. But if we're going to change that, it, there may need to be like a carve out in some of the language that basically says, you know, they can't interject except where they have to vote to have a temporary town manager or something, you know, just to make it all work. That's all. Okay. Um, I, I hear what you're saying on that. Um, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but if, I, if I'm following this, town, town manager goes out, we don't have an assistant town manager. The council appoints an interim town manager. But then after that, I don't see anything in here, but there may be other things that expands the council's responsibility other than appointing an interim. Right. And then the interim, you know that, the interim that's right. assumes. That's right. right. Yes, you're you're so, you're a you're hundred percent accurate, um, and, and so the the issue is not that you're appointing a town manager in essence, it's that this is relative to a temporary absence. So this is if Michael's gone for a week or whoever the town manager is, if if it's not Michael, whoever it is is gone for a week, and you all say. Um, okay, now we're going to have this person be the town manager. The way that it is now is that that job of figuring that out is left to the town manager, right? Which fits part and parcel with what he's doing. I think if it's a, if it's a longer absence or, or there's some gap for some other reason, that might be a different issue and that might be something we should look at. Um, but this is really for temporary absences. Um, I know it's happened in the past whereby Michael said, you know, Kim's in charge. And then before Kim, I, I believe there was times where they said uh, Chris Del Monte was, was acting. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you guys probably remember better than me, but um, so, so that's all. I just want to make sure if you're going to carve this out, you create an exception elsewhere so that it doesn't become a conflicting issue for everyone. Yeah. I guess the, uh, the other comment then was we'd have to look at what is the definition of temporary absence. Obviously I think it's defined within the charter somewhere because it's capitalized. So if yeah. I, I hear what you're saying, if a temporary absence is because of medical things of that nature, but on a normal course of business. Yep. A ten, yeah. If it's vacation, I, I hear what you're saying. We're not going to jump and say we get the charge, but you know, right. Uh, right. We'll take a look at that and see what the, hopefully the definition of temporary absence doesn't include vacation time, you know, a day right. off, and, and a, I, a week off. And again, it doesn't matter which way you go with that, but I don't know if you guys, I mean, just logistically speaking, I don't know that you have time to be calling special meetings. If the town manager heads out for a couple of weeks, right. I mean, it's yeah. just, it. Yeah. so you, you just got to think about those kind of things. Just, 
you know, pra- yeah. practicality too. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I look at his leave of absence, but I, I hear what you're saying. Another quick question along the same lines. That sentence where this continues until the town manager is able to perform his or her duties. It, do we need to be more specific in how that decision of them being able to perform duties is made? Yeah, I, that, yeah. It? It, it's a good question. I, I don't have the charter in front of me to look at that clause. I don't recall if I, I, you know, when we went through this, I was just trying to group these things together so that I could help you guys kind of get it organized. I don't think I looked at it in that kind of explicit detail, but I think the more detailed you are about this kind of stuff, the better off you're going to be. A big problem we have is when parts of the charter are not detailed enough. So I'd rather be over detailed than under. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a good point. I mean, I think that's what you want to look at. I think Mr. George makes a good point. You look back, see what does this mean by temporary absence? If he's going on vacation, the council doesn't want to be calling special meetings to have a department head appointed. I mean, that that's, you know, I don't think anyone's intending that, but um, so I, th- I think it just little things like that would just kind of have to like work through and, and get it firm and, and, you know, the, the committee. So you guys can send it back with something everyone can debate. Any other comments? Okay. Um, so I believe we do have a motion now on the floor. Uh, Joshua, for a, could you just tell me what that is, please? Um, I don't think anyone made a motion on 003 yet. Okay. I'll make a motion to continue us to our, to our next meeting. Second. Okay. Any further comments on that? Hearing none, Josh, we'll get a roll call vote on that. Continues to the next meeting. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. All right. We'll continue on with uh, fiscal year 22-004. Bridgewater, Town Council, Article 3, elected officials. Library trustees. So I think for this one, um, we actually, this is one of the ones I believe, and and you'll have to look, but I think this was one of the ones that they had made red lines to the red lines. And so what we ended up doing, and and Josh is on, he was the one that, that pieced it together, but I think we had decided, okay, your intention is to address the library trustee in the same way the Charter Review Committee did. So we cut and pasted whatever their recommendations were and stuck them directly into um, this ordinance. So what I would probably say to you all is is look at this ordinance compared to what our current ordinance is on library trustees and just see if if it's what you're looking at bringing before the council. I think this one's pretty simple in that way. Um, We just did a a cut and paste to make it easier on you guys, but uh, that's all I would recommend if there's things you want to amend, it would be based off of what we cut and pasted into here versus what's in the the current charter. That's all. Any other comments on that? We have a motion. Make a motion to continue to our next meeting. Second. Okay. Any comment to that motion? Hearing none. Uh, Joshua, vote please. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. Motion has been approved. And put my glasses on the floor. Uh, Library trustees. Next one be physical year 22 005, Bridgewater Town Charter. Town to city amendment. Mr. Rollins, please tell me that this is pretty much straightforward. (laughs) It it is in that you're changing words, um, but it isn't in some sense. (laughs) So um, just let me give you one example that's tangible that you all are going through currently. So we're doing the re-precincting 
right? Which is, you know, I, I see everyone's eyes glaze over when we start talking about it, probably including my own. Um, but we're in the process of re-precincting. Towns have precincts, cities have wards. And while we are a city for how we run our government, we are a town for election purposes in terms of our labeling and the way in which we precinct. So it will have further implications than just a word. Um, I don't know how many of those implications they are because you'll probably send me into an infinite abyss and rabbit hole trying to figure that out. But I, I, for all intents and purposes, the way we've always, and I've been an assistant town attorney or the town attorney since the charter basically came into play, we've always interpreted ourselves as a city except in the circumstance where in the statute, it doesn't label us in a way that makes sense to consider ourselves a city. And so there are contexts that that does happen. And, and the clearest and easiest example I could give is the precincting because you guys are in the middle of dealing with it. Um, so I just, you know, it, it could have other, you know, repercussions that we just have to be, uh, you know, responsive to if we do it. Um, do, so, so, yeah. Yep. Do cities have districts or is that a town thing as well? Well, so, so that's a, that's a town of Bridgewater thing. So okay. we have precincts that make up districts. Um, and so most cities have wards. So if you, okay. if you were to drive through a city, you'd say city councilor ward, whatever, that's the most yep. common form of town or city government is to have a ward. And then most okay. cities, if they don't have a city council, have aldermen, um, which are yeah. essentially selectmen, right? So um, just, just so you know, it's, it's more terminology, probably less substance, but it will change things. And, and it, there, there are some, some quirky rules about the amount of uh, people per ward or per precinct. Um, and then we, go, we break it down even further into districts, which gets a little that's a whole nother thing but just so you know it could have some repercussions outside of just saying oh we're a city let's call ourselves a city um there may be some other stuff we got to address so if it's something that the council is seriously considering i'm gonna want to make sure we we vet that i vet that um we try to figure out as many of those things in advance as we can with the reality and the understanding i certainly don't know every single municipal law there is so um, as a, as we go in time, we may be making, you know, amendments, um, to some of our ordinances, but, uh, just so you know that there, there could be other, you know, implications to that. That's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, just a, another quick question for Jason. So in addition to just the implication and clarifying language here, if we do make the switch to become a city. I'm in my head, I'm thinking of experiences I've had where we've rebranded in like a corporate experience where you have to potentially update contracts, you have to change signature lines, you have, there's, there are a lot of things that need to happen. Yeah. Is, is there anything from a legal perspective that would need to happen the day after this change that we should also consider? Probably not, because we're, we're not going to change uh, well, unless you do change uh, the, the manner in which contracts are executed by our town, the allotment or authority of the town manager versus the town council. So I would say no, just because he's going to be relabeled or she's going to be re relabeled as a city manager, I don't think would, would make it so we had to go back and redo contracts or anything like that. Um, Rebranding is another thing, of course. Yeah, I think there's going to be costs associated with that, but um, you know, you, you guys, you guys are the boss on that part of it. So. Okay. I'll make a motion to move this to our next scheduled meeting. Second. Okay. Motion to remain second. Any further comments? Hearing none. Uh, Josh, do a roll call vote, please. Mr. Souza. Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. Next on our agenda is Ordinance D 
Physical Year 22-006, Bridgewater Town Charter, Article 2, Legislative Branch, Term of Office. I entertain a motion on that one. Make a yeah, motion. I think that one's pretty oh, straightforward. I think that yeah. one's pretty, that one's actually pretty straightforward. I think um, that one's clear from the get-go, what you guys are, you know, trying to do. Um, okay. So, yeah. Could I just ask a procedural question with this? So if, if this, I'm trying to figure out why they would have picked two weeks in the first place. Like, what are we undoing that somebody thought through? And my, my question on this one is, let's say the election happens on a Saturday. This would imply that that following Monday, that, that counselor is in office. And so just the logistics of counting elections, clarifying votes, um, sign swearing people in, is all of that sort of implied in this decision where we've condensed that from two weeks of planning and action to essentially a Sunday or Monday? Or, or yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think from a practical perspective, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean we have to do it on Monday. We could do it on Tuesday or Wednesday, but this also keeps us from having to wait two weeks, especially if we have something that is pretty paramount that needs the, you know, we'll say the full complement of the council. I, I, I've yet to hear anyone argue to the contrary around keeping it um, for that, for that, you know, basically two weeks, I'll call it. Um, I think personally, I remember that that was just something that we stole from Franklin. Franklin does it that way. God knows why. Um, Got it. And we okay. just kept it in there. All right. Thanks. And no further comments. So let me ask J Jason for uh, continuity, even though this one's pretty straightforward and we may vote to support it, should we keep all of them at the council level? Because I guess I, the other part. Yes. Okay. All right. Never mind. I'm not going to go any farther. All right. I'll make yeah, a motion. I, to, uh, I would. Yep. Yep. Yeah, nope. Uh, I'm going to shut up now. I'll make a motion to uh, continue this to our next scheduled meeting. Second. Okay. All right. Any comments? Hearing no comments, uh, Joshua, uh, vote on that. Next meeting. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. In the office. Give me a second. My next ordinance, D, Physical Year 22-007, Bridgewater Town Charter, Article 2, Legislative Branch, Election Eligibility. So, so on this a, one... I entertain a motion on this before we have the discussion. It should, I believe it should be that way. Yeah, sure. No. Okay, I'll make a motion to move to our next scheduled meeting. Second. Okay, now we can open for discussion. So on, on, on this one, I would just recommend to you all um, that you look at the language that's being recommended and try to, I guess, glean what the intent is. I think the thing I'm, I'm struggling over is prior service in either at large or district counselor position does not limit eligibility. Um, that gets a little vague. I'm not, I'm not sure. I get the idea of not to exceed four elections. Um, so I think just make sure you guys might want to work that through and have it be as clear as humanly possible. Cause I can tell you, as you all know, it's become an issue. So we want that clause in the charter, whatever you guys decide it's to be, to be very clear so that that does not become an issue again. Any other comments? Maybe just a quick question. I'm wondering, is there a definition of an election? That we should also consider, Jason, if I think about like the fact that we're redistricting and we have to, I'm going to have to get elected again in my second year. in. Right, right. right. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what I think that's what that says here. I think they're saying election. So so let's say it's some special election. So you serve one term and you can only serve, you know, three additional terms thereafter. I don't know if that's the intent. I don't know, you know. And the way it is now, it's consecutive years. And so 
I, I think there's a lot of wiggle room for everyone here to kind of craft what they think they want to see here. Um, but the way this reads is for elections. And then it says, uh, prior service in either at large or district councilor position does not limit eligibility. So I, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means then you could have four elections in each of them. I, cause you're not limited eligibility wise. I, so I, I think it just needs to be clarified. You guys just need to put together a little clearer language so that the debate is, is more on point because the debate here would be kind of vague, right? I think you all need to debate it at the council level and have it be this is a really easy debate. We're either going to do this or this, and we're going to have the, the voters vote either this or this, um, because it's a little bit, it's a little bit vague. And if you know, if you all notice, some of these things were re uh, recommended by Councillor George Ann Gallagher to go to the voters as well. So if you read through each of the ordinances, what we've done is the ones they wanted to also go to the voters, we have put that language in there as well. So you can see which ones they wanted to do that and which they didn't. That's also something for you all to debate, but I just wanted to point that out to everyone. Okay, any, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Joshua, can I have a vote uh, to keep it in committee? Mr. Sousa? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Seven. Okay. Next on the agenda, D. Fiscal Year Two Two Dash Zero Zero Eight, Bridgewater Town Charter Article Two, Legislative Branch Annual Stipend. Motion to move this to the that? next scheduled meeting. Second. Okay, any discussion? Pretty straightforward. Yeah. You guys know this one. And th this yeah. one would go to the voters as well so that the actual vote on payment to counselors would be made essentially by the voters at the end of the day. Can I maybe ask two clarifying questions on this one? The idea of annual. So let's imagine there's an election in March. I am counselor up and before that election and after that election. Um, I, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out, is this a calendar year? Is this a fiscal year or is this an election term? It's a really good question. And that's exactly what the kind of stuff that I needs to be put in there. You're that's, that's exactly the issue with some of the recommendations that came out of committee is that these things are not parsed out enough. They need to be more explicit. Um, and, and keep in mind too, from a fiscal standpoint for the town, our fiscal year ends on June 30th. So we have a totally different year. So when we're doing our budgeting, we're budgeting out to June 30th, right? So that's a whole nother thing. So, so th those are things to absolutely consider. So the fiscal year, so you know, for the town runs July 1 uh, to June 30th. So just, just so you know, that might be relevant in your analysis too. I believe both cities and towns, the stipend is paid the first, quote unquote, the first day of the fiscal year. So we can put that in there. That probably makes sense. Perfect. Yeah. And then just a, a question. So a clause like this will prevent some people from being able to run. Um, I know I'm familiar with a, a employment clause where you cannot be paid as part of a committee external to the work you're doing. Um, so I'm wondering if there's something we could put in here to make this optional where somebody could potentially decline it if it would actually limit their availability, their ability to participate. I think you'll have a huge issue with the Charter Review Committee on, on that, Eric. I understand what you're saying by, by all means, but um, I mean, I think I, I would think that if a person has that restriction, they could either work within their employment to say that stipend will be earmarked for something else or, or, or it would prohibit them. And, and unfortunately, it's kind of the same thing that we're hearing about people that aren't running because they need a, you know, a stipend for other reasons. So no matter where we land on this, I, but I, in my personal opinion, and, and it can change, 
it, it basically has to be either you take it or you, or you don't run if you're restricted. Believe me, I, I look, I've been of the mindset for no stipend, but I've period uh, for a multitude of reasons, but I'm getting a little bit warmer to the fact that we may have some people that it may give them uh, a better ability to be able to run for office. So, yeah, yeah, I'm aligned with that too. I, I think it does have a lot of value. Let me put it, for me personally, if we get paid, then I don't get to use any of this as volunteer hours. So I've got, I can still get paid. I just can't use all of my council work towards my volunteer. So, yeah. It means I got to figure out other things. I'll, I'll make a little comment on it. Uh, being retired myself, uh, there's a lot of people in that age bracket have a lot of years of experience, no longer working, definitely have the time, and this amount of money could be a, a, an asset to them. And I think it would be an asset to the town to draw more of them in. Yeah, personally, this, if this goes to the voters, I'll be very interested to see how it goes. I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. I could see it going either way. Okay, any other comment on this? And would I have a motion here to bring it up at the, to the next meeting? Uh, Joshua, I have a roll, roll call vote on that. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you, the motion was approved. Okay, now let me see, this is a two page job. Hmm. Next one. Uh, fiscal year 22-009, Bridgewater Town Charter, Article, my glasses are fogging up, three, Legislative Branch Recall Provision. I'll make a motion to move this to our next scheduled meeting. Second. Article two. Okay, motion made and second, send it to our next committee meeting, open for discussion. So on this one, this is one of those ones that they had actually redlined the red line uh, that would, had gone to the state house and got shot down of a recall provision. So our, as you all may be aware, our town charter doesn't have a recall position uh, provision. We did have a lawsuit over it, oh gosh, nine years ago, I believe. And what essentially came out of that lawsuit was a special act uh, that we had previously enacted um, guided the way that our recall provision uh, ran back when a couple of um, counselors were being recalled. Uh, that could essentially no longer be the case because we actually um, revoked our prior bylaws subsequent to that. So it'd, it'd be an interesting legal issue, but there's, there probably should be a recall provision. So what we, what we did here was we just cut and pasted what was recommended um, as edits to the edits um, and gave it to you all. But I think the Charter Review Committee inaccurately assumed that we had a recall provision, which we, we actually don't in our charter. Um, so just so you know that, that's, that's where this derives from. Any other comments? Just a topic I think probably for discussion in the next meeting, but the number of signatures is lower than the number of signatures somebody needs to get to actually run. So I'd be interested in the discussion, maybe future discussion about, are we comfortable with those thresholds and what should they be? And those come up because the, the legal matter we had in Superior Court, and, and again, I'm just going off my memory, but I think it was 2012. Um, what was that very thing was the percentage of si signatures needed in a district versus at large. And um, so, yeah, absolutely. Those things need to be fine tuned. Any other comments? Okay. Hearing none. Yeah. Roll call vote. Joshua, please. Mr. Souza. Keep it in committee. Mr. Susan. Yes. Yes. Mr. George. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. Motion approved. 
we'll move on to get my thing here. Ah. Okay, fiscal year 22-010, Bridgewater Town Charter, Article 4, City Manager, Term of Office. Hmm, change that from three to five years. Entertain a motion? Yeah, um, before, we, before we motion this, Frank, um, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Massachusetts, you, you can't have a contract with a city manager, town manager for more than five years, correct? No, you cannot. Nope. But I, I think also we, we're going to, you're going to want to probably parse this out. So there, there are obviously pros and cons to this. I can tell you when we're negotiating contracts, uh, I'd rather not have to negotiate a five-year contract. I think it, it behooves you to, to actually mm -hmm. negotiate fewer years, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. I, I'm not sure where these turn, there's a, there's another one uh, that relates, the next one relates to, to my position. Um, I'm an at will employee. So, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to give me a five year, I'll take it, but I don't know why you'd want to give me one. Um, so, so I think there's some pros and cons to this. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, what, what the, where they all derive from. Um, maybe just something to think about. Uh, you know, uh, obviously we can parse this out, fine tune it. If your if your goal is to get something back before the council that talks about term limits, um, I can make sure we we cite to the law and we make it as specific as possible for you all. Um, but I think that's yeah, for, you, my, for you all. Yeah, my because when I first saw this, to what you just said, Jason. I thought this was an actual term limit, term limits for the town manager, which right. I couldn't understand that. Right. Um, I found out after Dennis and I got together that it's not, well, we found out it wasn't a term limit. That's what Ed said. It was, the, the suggestion was to not have a contract longer than yep. five years. Yep. Found out after Dennis and I got together that by mass state law, you can't have That's right. a contract longer than five minutes. I mean, I, I, you know, I would, I would support moving this to the next meeting, but I, I would highly recommend in this particular case that we recommend not to move forward on this yep. by the mere fact that it's telling us not to, we can't do something that by law we can't do anyway. And that right. just gets very, very clunky. But right. again, Frank, I'll, I'll make the motion to move this to the, to the next scheduled meeting, but I just wanted to make that comment. We have a second on that motion. Second. Okay. Any further comments? Hearing none. Joshua, roll call, please. Mr. Souza. Yes. Mr. George. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay. Approved. Let's hold it for the next meeting. Next one. Ordinance. FY 22-011, Bridgewater Town Charter, Article 5, Administrative Organization, City Attorney, Term Limits. Uh, we have a motion so, on that one? Open so just open it before we motion again, okay. and Jason already brought, brought it up, um, and I, I, you know, I'll take, I'll take responsibility. I probably should have caught this, not to say that it shouldn't go to committee, but um, yeah, I mean, Jason is an employee at will or the city solicitor. I don't know if I'd want to be called city solicitor, but it's a whole nother thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I mean, I, I think in this particular case too, where we're, th this would be putting something in a place that we don't currently have. That's not to say that the council doesn't want to consider, but there's a bigger problem because we don't determine the city solicitors employment contract currently as it's construed that's the town manager so right, i think right. i think you would run into even more problems just like we can't tell the town manager you know to only extend the police chief's contract to two years i mean it, you know he gets to determine that um i think i understood the intent of this but i i, I don't 
as, as it's construed. Again, I'll support moving it to the next meeting, but this may be another one too that I don't think uh, I would support bringing to the council because it it's not what we're currently doing right now contractually and we can't tell the, the, the town manager how to contract out for the town attorney. So, so but, there's, there's actually two things that were built into this one. So one has you all appointing. So you guys would become the appointing authority. Whereas right now you ratify. So for all intents and purposes, it's really just two people that appoint now, right? The town manager picks, but you guys have to approve it. And if you don't, the person doesn't get picked, right. but, um, the way this works is you guys would be the appointing authority, which is right. fine. But if you're going to do that, then we need to think long and hard about the structure of employment in the town, right? That, that puts the town attorney in a totally different position, right? Actually, that's um, a good point. And, and it puts, it puts my day-to-day, -day, I'm just using it from my own perspective. It would change my day-to-day -day entirely, right? There might be something that the council wants me to address from a quote unquote town perspective, but then the town manager would want me to address it from a quote town perspective. And so I think if you're going to change who appoints the city solicitor or the town attorney, you got to change the whole structure of how that person's employed and who they answer to and who at the end of the day fires them or hires them. Right. So I think, that's, that's something to definitely consider as part of that. I can tell you that it's usual that in a city, a, a mayor is the one that appoints the city solicitor and the city council would have their own separate attorneys. We don't have that process here, but that's how that usually works. Um, not that you couldn't do it this way, but if you do, we, sh we just got to figure out how that looks. Um, yeah. Because for instance, if I, if I go... If, if I'm, at, I have to answer a complaint where the town's getting sued right now for a, it's a land thing. Um, so I have to answer a complaint, right? So the strategy involved in that, I might talk to the town manager about, well, if I'm appointed by you all, that might be, you know, not that I don't keep you guys involved anyway, but any different town attorney might look at it like, well, I, I just talk over here and then it might be contrary to what someone on the other side wants. So it gets very convoluted. So I think you, if you're gonna do it this way, um, you just gotta, we gotta make sure we structure the town government to fit that, that's all. So you're not creating a situation whereby you have to appoint special counsel a million times and your legal budget goes through the roof. We're very fortunate. I basically do everything, right? And our legal budget is very small because of that. but. Other towns that don't do it that way have three hundred thousand uh, dollar, you know, fiscal year legal budgets. Ours is seventy five thousand. So right. just to keep that in perspective, that's because you can create a lot of conflicts of interest um, where you have someone managing someone that's hired by someone else. So you just want to think stuff like that through. That's all. Uh, did we make a motion to move to the next scheduled meeting? Because if we didn't, I'll make that motion. Okay, motion was made and second. I'll second. Okay, next meeting. All right, any other comments on that after the motion? Hearing none, Joshua, roll call, please. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. George? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Thank you. The motion was approved. Okay, let's see. Next on our agenda, uh, public comments. Joshua, you see anyone out there wishing to speak? Nope, I don't see anyone. All right, thank you. Next on the agenda, will I entertain a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, motion been made and second to adjourn. Roll call vote, please. Shusa. Yes. Mr. George. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. We, we probably should have set our next meeting before we did this so we can agree on a day. You guys may want to give, I think what I anticipate you should probably do is, is redline it the way that you want to make edits to this. 
send it to me, but give me enough time to then go through your red line so I can make some changes and we can have a, a good discussion on them. Um, so just make sure you give yourself some time to be able to do that in a way that makes sense for you. Is, is there a way that we can look at a common document or I guess I'm just sort of thinking about who's doing what here. Yeah, you, you really, you really can't uh, outside of the meeting, right? Because it'd be an open meeting violation. Um, but what we can do is anticipate, you all should probably maybe do red lines for the next meeting. Then we talk about the red lines and then maybe give me a meeting after that to take your red lines and, and put them into something that makes sense for you guys. I don't know if that process sounds good, but just, just a thought. That works. Okay, do we have an idea as when we're trying to get these next meetings scheduled? It looks like, I mean, by the looks of this thing, there's an awful lot that we're going to be looking at. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to take we get a, back well, together again. Yeah, Frank, I, I would, if, if we could just maybe not pick it now and yeah, give us at least a couple of weeks and then you can kind of take a pulse of where people stand on reviewing it because we there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So over the next couple of weeks, hopefully we'll all get a, three of us will get a chance to look at it and see what's what and what changes and uh, then get back together and discuss it. Great. Does that sound Great. good? Yeah. All right. Everyone have a good uh, night. Thank Me you, too. everyone. Have Thanks. a nice night. Thank you.